Well, hello there, seven blessings, my friends. My name is Ken Napsok, and this is Collider's Thrones Talk. That's right, we're going to be talking Game of Thrones right here, getting you ready for Season 7 with two recap and preview episodes. And then each week, we'll be breaking down, reacting, reviewing, and just geeking out over Game of Thrones Season 7, the penultimate season. It is going to be big despite being the smallest season, yet to help me along with this journey are some returning favorites and a new face. Please welcome my wonderful panel here. We have the veteran, Dennis Zen. How are you? I'm doing great because it's getting close to Game of Thrones time. And Game of Thrones time is my favorite time of the year. <laughs> so us here, sitting here, talking about makes it real. We've yep. seen two trailers, and I I'm ready to go. You are a calm, cool, collected man, Dennis, but when Game of Thrones enters your, your brain, yes. I see a new Dennis. Yeah, there's, there's some crazy that comes out in the <laughs> eyes. Speaking of crazy in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Back this year, he was uh, yeah. here last year, uh, John Roca. Yeah. This, this, yeah, go ahead. No, no, I was, I was gonna call the outlaw, but this is a different John too. No, no, this no, is, no. This is like uh, this is like a focused Game of Thrones fan. Yeah, you have to be. This kind of property, this kind of franchise, you got to be aware of every little detail because you never know when it's going to pop up. Benjamin and his cold hand showed up out of nowhere. We never know when things are going to show up on this show. So for me, you have to always be on point. It's a great challenge. So I'm happy to come yeah. back this year. Look, by no means, I'm not an expert. I'm just a very passionate fan who studies the maps in his free time and has read all the books. But I have with me someone who, every time I talk Game of Thrones with her, she wows me with her knowledge. If you've been watching the movie trivia showdown, she is my team partner in the Nerds Watch, Rachel Cushing. Yeah. Hello. Hello Rachel. I am beyond excited to be here. It might be June, but winter is finally here. <laughs> yeah. And I'm so ready to dig into this season, talk about it with fellow Thrones fans, and to just you know, be another part of Collider. You are uh, very welcome here. You bring a lot of knowledge, and people are going to learn that very fast. A lot of times when I have questions, I text you. He what does. that thing mean? That. <laughs> Why sword there? <laughs> and you answer. But guys, uh, this is, as you can see, a little bit of a different kind of discussion. This is more of a fireside chat. Mm. This is a bunch of fans getting together, getting ready. Now, we're not going to break down every season. We assume at this point, if you're watching, you are not ready to be, you've, you don't need to be spoiled. You're not going to be spoiled. You've watched all the seasons like I have, and I'm sure you guys have over and over again to get ready for this. Dennis, when did you start your rewatch this year? I started my rewatch, I think, in January, and then wow. I, I, I finished, uh, I think, end of March, early April. But I, I, That's early. It was early. I actually was telling Roka beforehand yeah. that, that I should have timed it better so that yeah. I finished season six right about now so it'd be even more fresher in my mind but i did get to go to the the game of thrones concert series the live concert oh, yeah. experience that's kind of why i got my girlfriend who didn't yeah. hadn't seen it before we rewatched the whole series i i like an idiot was offered to go to that by a good friend of mine named christian and i was like too busy that night i said i can't do it <laughs> And I'm crying tears of tears of regret for not going. That was a great experience, right? Yeah, yeah, it was it was excellent. I hope they do it again. I'm sure they will. John, do you do you rewatch going into each year? Yeah, I spent last Sunday watching the whole series all over again. I don't, you know, I don't all have a lot. Seventy hours I, I'm not, in one day? No, no, no. I mean the first last season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last season. Yeah. Last season. <laughs> okay. I defy the laws of physics. I watched it at speed two point five two times. <laughs> yeah, I mean you're an intense guy, but that's that's some intense stuff. It was like this. But long. you get through. So you got through. You're ready. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to re I, we watched season six just to kind of get everything kind of you know going. But, you know, there's a lot of things. We talk about here on Collider, so a lot of things you got to keep track of. So just to kind of mm -hmm. strip away the cobwebs and get a little more focused for this show, I, I, I did that. And you know, I'm not giving, I'm not nice enough to have a girlfriend, so I have time. And so I had a whole Sunday to go. Yeah, you know the pain. I understand. You know the you pain, Ken. I know what you mean. Rachel, you and I, we're we're, we're the quote unquote book readers here, but we're both behind our rewatch. Yeah, it, it just. This whole spring sort of sped by, and mm. I was like, oh, yeah, I should just probably start getting into this. So I've actually cherry-picked a rewatch. I've watched a handful of episodes, specific ones that I knew I wanted to, and then I'm just getting into my season six rewatch. But don't worry, I saw each You'll episode a good ten times last year, so we're good. <laughs> yeah. And I mentioned the term book readers, and I, will, I, I have to address it. Uh, some people enjoy the show for what it is. And guess what? This is about the TV show. So without a doubt, 99% of what we're going to be talking about is focused on the TV show. If you haven't read the books, you're welcome. This Join this party. We're not going to be, bless you, uh, we're not going to be uh, smug book readers. Rachel and I are, we're going to avoid that. And if we start going that territory, John, Dennis, 
you have a right to remind us that we're being smug book readers. I don't know how we can do that if we've never read the books. <laughs> well, we'll just go along with what you, you're going. If, like, if it doesn't look, sound I, no, no, but if smugness comes I, out, I, 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 there's I, nothing wrong with the yeah. book readers. Right, fair yeah, enough. The book readers are fine. But like this shirt I have here, that wasn't in the books. Obviously, if I say that too many times this yeah. year, John, oh. you just pull me aside that's fair. and say knock it off. Mm -hmm. But that said, I do want to address the fact that the books, maybe more than any other property, inform what we know and inform our knowledge. There's gonna be times. In season seven, we're probably meeting a character named Archmaster Marwin. If you don't know who that is, well, we do, Rachel and I do, and we might inf inform you with some of the stuff we know, but we'll try, Rachel, to not spoil the books because you still might be wanting to read the books. Operative word is try, try. but yes, we, we'll will, we will avoid the smugness. All right, enough, we've set up, <laughs> we've, uh, we've got to know each other here. Not, I mean, we know each other, but it's just like an awkward, four-way date, right? <laughs> Talking sure. Game of Thrones. This episode is going to, be, uh, going to be called Seasons Past. Referring to the weather and the seasons past, we're going to focus on season six. We're going to kind of break it up by uh, the geographical location of a lot of the stories, but this is going to be free form too. So uh, you guys jump on in as we mm. get into the discussion. Uh, I look at season six as the prelude to the great wars to come. We have a lot of things in season six that set up what we got going on in season seven. We're mm -hmm. gonna do a more speculative preview of season seven next week. Um, so let's start with overall the season, what it meant to you, what it, what it brought to the table, and maybe the legacy of the season already. John, I wanna start with you. Sure, I, I absolutely enjoyed this season. I think it all led up to that ninth episode where we had the battle between Jon Snow and Ramsey. Everything had been built. I think the entire series had been building to that particular battle. Mm -hmm. You know, we wanna have this, uh, Ramsey had come, really come across as even more more villainous than King Joffrey, if that was possible. What he did to his dad, what he did to his, young, his dad's young wife and their child, all of that, seeing all of it come together and all the different machinations going on, the, the Knights of the Vale, uh, the, uh, the, this whole thing with Sansa, this whole thing with Littlefinger, all of it was kind of, you know, everyone kind of came to their own. Arya, too, coming out. Like, it seemed like everyone came uh, of age, so to speak. All the Stark children really came of age. Arya, uh, Sansa, and Jon Snow himself, like all of it. And poor, uh, who, who got shot with the arrow again? <laughs> Poor Rickon. Poor Rickon, who showed well, up out of nowhere. Didn't and zag when he, when he, he showed up. Zig. Or, yeah, you know, that. I don't know. But all of that, you know, but we saw them really kind of come to the front. And great work by the actors as well, and great great uh, scripts that brought them really powerfully into our presence again to lead their respective uh, people. As the show has gone on to the Budget's grown. Yeah, yeah. The mm -hmm. acting has matched what the budget has brought. The, yeah. bu the budget has increased. You go back to season one. It's little tiny things, little shots close on walls. Dennis, you're you're big in production. You yeah. know the tricks. You probably watch season one to now, and it's like a different show. Well, yeah, especially because when they first made this show, they had no clue. I don't care who they are. No one knew this show was going to be a huge hit, yeah, and right. they thought, okay, let's make this show. There'll be a cult viewership and then we can get subscribers through HBO that way. Right. They had no idea this was going to surpass their previously big biggest show which was Sopranos. Yeah. And now Game of Thrones has gone beyond that. And so now they have the money because they yeah. know that it's worth it to put back into the show. So it made for an epic season behind you is one of the best shots yeah. I think oh, ever. Uh, that oh, yeah. cinematic yeah. Yes. view of Jon Snow facing down the Bolton army. Dennis for you, what does this season mean? What did it bring to the table? Yeah, it's definitely this season was about the Starks and mm -hmm. what, what Roka was saying because you know we saw Sansa and through many many of these seasons we've seen her being very naive mm -hmm. very not even after traumatic events like mm -hmm. Ned Stark's death we're talking about uh, uh, her mom and, and Rob even the pa past those times you could still see that she was still naive she's still waiting for uh, a white knight to come save her mm -hmm. uh, this is the season where she actually becomes somebody who now is someone to be actually feared mm -hmm. someone that actually is now in the game of thrones before mm -hmm. she never wanted to be part of it she she didn't know how to play it now she's part of it Arya, through these years we know what her goals are but now she's finally getting to the point to achieve then john snow of course he he's been kind of the reluctant hero he's been mm -hmm. the guy that's that he's really good at stuff he's the most uh you know noble and honorable person yeah. on the show and but he's been very reluctant to take the leadership role but now he's finally done it and we we saw with battle of the bastards mm -hmm. what happens yeah. and we know that he's going to play an important role in this upcoming season absolutely you talk about santa and rich i want to transition to you santa at the end of season four is black dress santa oh, she's yeah. strong <laughs> season five some of the story uh, controversial at best with what happened to mm -hmm. Sansa, uh, the stuff with Ramsay. Season six, she comes back, and that's part of what season six was. Like John said, great point, John. Mm -hmm. Everyone kind of stepped up to where we need them to be towards this end. 
There was such a feeling of coming together in season six. The momentum built, for better or worse, the world that's been built over all of these seasons has been so big that sometimes in like seasons four and five, you'd be concentrating on some characters and others would, their stories would start to feel like they're treading water. Right. And last season, there was little to no treading water. Right. Everybody was forward momentum. People were coming together for the first time. They were reuniting. I mean, John and Sansa finally mm -hmm. reuniting. Um, Theon and Yara reuniting. Tyrion and Danny. And there's all of these groups coming together and the final goals were in sight, both mm -hmm. for them as characters and us as viewers. So there was just so much momentum built and so much energy in season six that mm -hmm. I was frankly blown away by it, especially after some of the disappointments in season five. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and we talk about people coming up to where they need to be. I wanna talk about favorite <laughs> moments, and I'll ask you guys just a couple favorite moments sure. before we get really into the nitty gritty of what happened and where we're going. But you talk about, John, talk about people coming up. We talk about the Starks, the good guys. <laughs> They're yeah. the good guys, yeah. Dennis, right? Yeah. John Snow, you mentioned that's a great point. He's one of the few characters without shades of gray. Yeah. He's just got shades of good. <laughs> but there's someone who really, really stepped up, and that is Cersei Lannister. Yeah. My favorite moment still is Cersei Lannister, Wildfire, the Sept of Baelor, <laughs> everyone in her way, gone in one big explosion. And fortunately, that took out her son, too, as well, with his suicide following that. Yeah. But that sip of wine, Ugh. she's the bad guy, bad girl, bad woman, bad queen. That sip of wine was earned. Cersei Lannister, really took out revenge, you have to almost tip the cap, Rachel. She chose violence. She yeah. went full-blown full, full blown into it. And what's great about that, aside just from being so dramatic and amazing with the Sept of Baylor scene, it's earned. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's never been a good guy, but she was often redeemed by the love of her children. Mm -hmm. And to lose them one by one in the ways that she did, and to lose her father, and basically to lose everything around her, she just put on that black dress of armor, yeah. had the mountain at her side, and was like, I'm taking you all down. Yeah. And she did it with style. John? That's an interesting point you say, Rachel. She's redeemed. I never found her redeemed in any way, shape, and form until last the treatment that she received at oh, the really? hands of the sparrow. Okay. When she was in there and then she got so she got treated so, so terribly, and then to have to walk mm -hmm. that way naked and shame, which is my, one of my favorite the moments of that season, shame. the yeah. walk of shame, literally a walk of shame. All of that, they, I was, no one deserves that. Like in my mind, I was like, that's such a, a incredibly powerful punishment that I started to feel that. And so when she made the turn, I back to being evil, I was strangely okay with it. Right. Because <laughs> I was like, I get, there's, there's validity here, there's reasons here, right? But before, in those five seasons, she'd done a lot of terrible things to people, so I couldn't find her redeemed in any way, shape, or form because her children were just her access to power, nothing else. There's, and so... No, John, there, yeah, that's all I'm saying. Great, I, no, I, great point. I didn't necessarily feel that she loved her children, they were more yeah. access to power. There's some of that, yeah. yeah. The, I, I think one of Lena Hetty's finest moments as Cersei is what you talk about in season five, when she yeah. has to lick the water off the dirty side. Yeah, um, and, and, and that's one of the uh, Cersei's sympathy points. You'll, yeah. hear, you'll hear me say that a lot. <laughs> Cersei's sympathy points. Season one, when she asked Robert Baratheon, did we ever have a chance for love? Right. And he said, no. Her heart kind of broke again 17, 19 years later, depending on where the story goes. That's actually goes. one of the best scenes from that season. It though. is. Yeah. It's, just, it's a simple two-person dialogue between between yeah. Robert Baratheon and Cersei Lannister. But I, I disagree with uh, John over there. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah, love I love it. I, 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 yeah, I, I Trial by combat. I, I never felt that Cersei was, was a villain character. I yeah. mean, until the end of, of this season when she does her godfather thing, I found her, wow. even though she she's a bad person, but I felt like her love for her children is real, and obviously... Things have happened to her in the past yeah. that made her feel the way she does. She's not a good person. She right. does a lot of bad things, but the pure evil didn't really come until till the end of last season. Did you like that moment? Was that was that an earned moment for you? Yes, Did she definitely. earn that sip? Definitely. And it, it would definitely the, the the loss of her children was was what yeah. really set her free to become what what ultimately yeah. people feared. The Marcella death at the end of five, Rachel, yeah. was big. And it was also a great moment for Jamie. We'll talk about mm -hmm. that. But yeah, in terms of Cersei, like I thought she, she, she couldn't match up to Tywin, her father. And that's tough for anybody. I have to say, like one of the other things that I think should be taken into consideration for Cersei's character over the seasons is she's a woman in a 
yeah. very starkly men's world in the world of Westeros. And she's, she's like a man in a woman's body, somebody mm -hmm. who wanted power, who wanted to be respected, who wanted to have a say in things. Mm -hmm. She didn't go about it well, right. but she was... You know, Tywin treated her as most lords treated their daughters, as just somebody to marry off and make alliances and do what is told. And, and I kind of like the spirit of pushing back in, yeah. in the ways that she did. Yeah, I get it. Not likable, yeah. but mm. and weirdly understandable in some respects. There's a lot in season six. That's fair. You, and, and I want to get you guys' <laughs> thoughts on this too, but Rachel, I want to start with you on... In season six, there was a lot of, of the females of Westeros. Oh, yeah. And it's important to George R. R. Martin. He says, mm -hmm. I, I write female characters yeah. like this. I write them as characters first. Yeah. They're female second. So in season six, there was a lot of these, uh, Leanna Mormont, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. even Ilaria Sand uh, taking matters in her hands, Olena Ty Tyrell, yep. unfortunately Marjorie bit the oh. death, one of my yeah. favorite characters. <laughs> yeah. But we always talk about strong female characters. In season six, there was a lot of that. There was so much coming into their own, I mean, Danny mm -hmm. in Vase Dothrak mm -hmm. and having that moment that, that she hadn't had since Misa in season three. Um, Sansa, which you guys have talked mm -hmm. so well about already, definitely. Arya finally making decisions. Yara, Yara is seen with <sighs> Danny at the end of episode nine, when they clasp arms like men do mm -hmm. into, in agreement for what they're, what they're going to do to make the world a better place than their fathers did. like. That's the girl power. There's yeah. an empowerment in that. And Martin wrote that into the books, and the shows embraced it. And last season was brilliant for all of that, yeah, for sure. It was important. And, and you talk about Santa. Great point, Dennis. She was, seemed to be, in the past, waiting for White Knights. Yes. She became her own White Knight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and what's great about this is that this stuff is earned. Because we've mm -hmm. watched movies uh, that, that try and, and pr do this kind of girl power thing, but it's so artificial and fake mm. because they either you watch the movie or a TV show and, and it's just kind of thrown in your face. There's no depth or character or progression where Keep these right. you see all the story, the character arcs for Danny, for mm. Sansa, mm -hmm. for Arya, for Cersei. You see how they they change from one to the next. It's not a sudden thing. You see them develop. So that's where 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 I think something like Game of Thrones can do is it, it, it earns those moments. I agree. Absolutely. Let's start really diving in here with a look at stuff going around the world of Westeros. We're going to start in the north. That's where I think some of the big stuff coming out of season six going into seven is. And we'll ha we have to start with the big story, the headline, Jon Snow's Alive. Yeah. Roka, did you doubt for a second he was coming back? <laughs> well, yes, I did, because Benioff and Weiss and George, George R. R. Martin have a have a, a tendency to zig when they should zag and zag right. when they should zig, so I wasn't going to be surprised, um, I, as opposed to Walking Dead, where I knew Glenn was going to be alive. With this, mm. I was like, uh, maybe they'll play with this idea that he might not come back, mess with the audience even more, because there's something, people come back. People yeah. always say, oh, I'm going to stop watching. With Game of Thrones, they never do that. <laughs> they always come back because the addiction is too powerful. So I thought for a second. But then with Melisandre coming in, uh, she had, uh, Melisandre rather, coming in, she had to be redeemed in some way for what mm -hmm. she had done to uh, Princess Shireen, right? And Shireen. so, yeah. Uh, huh? Shireen. Yeah, yeah Princess Shireen, Shireen sorry, yeah. I'm saying it wrong. Princess Shireen, what she had done to her and setting her on fire, like, there had to be a way to redeem her. And she, if Mel Melisandre is consistent in one way and one way only, she gravitates to whoever she feels is in power in that moment <laughs> to get to be the king. And so in that moment, I felt that she had to bring Jon Snow back. Of course, it worked the narrative. Of course, we had to have a hero in the, in the show. But I also think it was believable. And like you said, Dennis, it was earned. You know, yeah. Jon had established himself so much in our consciousness. And Melisandre had been kind of, at, at times, a cursory uh, uh, or ancillary character and then really started to come into her own over the last two or three seasons. Mm -hmm. So to see her do this uh, with Sir Davos there as well, like all of it there was just so such a powerful moment right. uh, for me. So I enjoyed that very much. The season started a lot. Yeah, you're talking about Melisandre revealing her true self yeah. as a 400-year-old mm -hmm. uh, crone. <laughs> uh, uh, Melisandre has always been one of my favorite characters. And I'm yeah. still on board. I don't care if she's old and gray there, 400 years. Dennis, let's talk about the, this. Was, now, this is where us smug book readers, mm -hmm. we didn't know. Because this is, this is going well beyond book five. Mm -hmm. We're still waiting for George to finish A Dream of Spring. Excuse me. I uh, know. Winter, Winter. Winter, 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 Winter Dream, Dream of Spring. Spring, the last book. George, get writing. Um, <laughs> Melisandre bringing back Jon Snow is not shocking, Dennis. No. You could have predicted that. 
to your term, earned. Did this moment, was it earned in, in, in your mind? Yeah, it was earned, and, and I was 100% sure that he was coming. I, I remember I got an argument with Christian at the end of season five. because People he, don't argue with Christian a lot. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was upset. He's like, oh, well, I'm like, Christian, it's, it, there's no way they're not bringing him back because right. his story has not ended. If you watch some of the other characters, they... Even if their their death seems shocking to you, you'll see the little foreshadowing of how and why they died. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where Jon Snow, they they haven't they've done some foreshadowing, but his story has not ended. And then of course they did the whole thing with Bran storyline, which is not my favorite one. Is it? It's, a, yeah. it's just for exposition. They reveal the whole R plus L equals J theory yeah. from the books of the Tower of Joy, and so revealing who who Jon Snow actually is. That was, you know, a bit a big part of. It happened, I think, in the series finale of. Uh, yeah, it was finally confirmed. Yeah, the they, 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 yeah. they were hinting they at it in different us all yeah, along yeah, the yeah. way. <laughs> yes, and so so I think that was something that that I think us as fans wanted to see. Yeah. But at the same time, it really brands characters. I don't know. Just just not that interesting. Not that interesting. <laughs> yeah. Let's put a pin in brand. I want to yeah. do want to talk about that. Uh, but Rachel, Jon Snow, the now the King of the North. This was a big journey for him from death. To the King of the North all through this season. This was uh, Kit Harrington's best season. Yep. Mm. Definitely, he was given the most to work with because psychologically, how do you deal with not just having died, but died at the hands of your brothers, the, right. the, the Night's Watch right. brothers. And, and when he says, my watch is ended, and he gives up being a member of that brotherhood, there is so much power in that because nobody ever says my watch is ended. You say mm -hmm. my watch begins when you say the oath and then they say over your grave, his watch is ended. Yeah. So like that felt earned to me. And then for him to struggle with, well, what next? Mm -hmm. And meeting Sansa, she's the one who says what's next. What's next is we take back Winterfell and the, the evolution of what they do over the course of the se season leading up to the Battle of the Bastards. That's a character arc that, to me, is one of the best in the entire series, mm -hmm. and season six really allowed it to go there, to get him to that leadership place, and right. Kit Harrington rose to the occasion. And that's something that, that, that you know, uh, that has to be highlighted, is Sansa and Arya are really the driving energy yep. and the mm -hmm. smarter energies in the Stark yeah. children. Yeah. Like, yeah. Rob has been foolish and got his ass cut up in well, the Well, that's how he ended up getting killed. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And John at times was a bit mealy-mouthed and like, we should do the right thing, guys. <laughs> you know, he was a bit too... And then this coming back from the dead, killing the people who had killed him, which, yep. which, which I really was surprised oh. that his character did. Yeah. And then to... Great moment. Right? Yeah. Great. And then to proceed out of there, but then to also understand that Sansa is a stronger one, which is mirrored by what's happened with uh, with uh, uh, with uh, Theon and, and Yara. Like, yes. Theon also gave in to Yara because yep. he understands Yara is a stronger energy here. So it makes sense for John to kind of step aside a little bit that Sansa take over. Sansa's making the moves with the little finger. All of this is, speaks to a good leader. It's not about ego or pride. It's about what is best for the entire, for what you're trying to do, right? And so I like that with John and his progression leading up to that moment in the Battle of the Bastards. So. Yeah, great point that it was yeah. Sansa that was like, you know, yeah. like Rachel said too, like, mm -hmm. come on. Yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> wander Westeros? <laughs> exactly. We exactly. got to go down. Yeah. Reclaim Winterfell. You got to fight for your family. Ramsey yeah. is there. Ramsey. The big baddie. <laughs> you guys said it. You guys talked about it. Ramsey, did, did he supersede Joffrey Dennis? Yeah, yeah, he did. I, I recently read a, a poll where they said there's only two choices, right? Mm. What was the more satisfying death, Joffrey or Ramsey? And I actually saw that Joffrey was like 70% to 30%. And I was really? like, no way. Mm. E even though we all wanted Joffrey to die, yeah. the way he wait, went wait, out... Wait, John, did you want Joffrey to die? Of course I did. Yeah. Just check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the way he went out... It wasn't satisfying right. to most viewers, at least I, at least in my uh, my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I heard that a lot. Yeah, where Ramsay, you got this huge battle, and the way he goes out by s actually Sansa's hands, not yeah. Jon Snow's, where yeah. where she you know six the dogs on him. <laughs> it was perfect because of what he did to her in the, yeah. in, the in the previous season. Right? Yeah, absolutely, Rachel, Ramsay, did he get his comeuppance to your uh, liking? First, I just have to say, most satisfying death is Viserys' death in season one via <laughs> Golden Crown. I'm sorry. I don't <laughs> think this season has ever... Uh, they've never yeah. topped that. However, yeah. Yeah. yes, Ramsay absolutely got his comeuppance because it came at the hands of Sansa. And that's mm -hmm. the emotion... Mm -hmm. That's the emotional connection that we had to it because a lot of people suffered at his hands. Yeah. Look at Theon. But she... 
was the one that we emotionally connected to. And then to go through all of that with John and the Battle of the Bastards. And then the, John, I mean, was like one more punch away from killing mm -hmm. Ramsey, but he stopped because Sansa was standing there. And then she got to have her moment. And it paralleled all the things that, you know, um, Ramsey had done. Uh, he killed his uh, mother in law and yeah, his, uh, his half brother via the dog. So yeah. just. Everything came He's full circle. Bragging about, I haven't fed the dogs in seven days yeah, before yeah, that battle, yeah. and well, they got to eat John as the outlaw. I'm yep. going to consider you the expert on heels. Yes. <laughs> Who's, who in the end? Was it was Ramsey a bigger, badder villain than oh, Joffrey? absolutely, because Joffrey did it because he was a impish little child. Right. Joffrey, uh, 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 Ramsey did it because he's a calculating evil man who understood. Sadistic. He was sadistic. Very, yeah. S what are you, a psychopath. He understood what he was doing and why he was doing it mm -hmm. and cared nothing about it. He didn't have a moment of regret. There were times in, in the seasons with Joffrey where he's like perplexed why people are mad at him. And that's the <laughs> person who's not necessarily understanding the evil that he's doing, but Ramsey knew what he was doing. And you mentioned, Ken, your favorite yeah. moments. My favorite moment is when John stops. What you just mentioned, Rachel. Mm -hmm. He could have killed him with one more punch, but he understood he's mm. not the one who has the right to justice. Yeah. As the expert on revenge and vengeance on this panel, <laughs> I will we, tell you. We are officially, if I could put a little signature <laughs> right there, that's what you got. You have to know who deserves vengeance and who has the right to revenge. John had a right to kick his, kick his ass and beat him senseless for what he did to his sister, but... Sansa deserved the ultimate vengeance, the ultimate, and yeah. she did it in such a classy way that yeah. maintained her dignity as a leader. And I thought, as a as a potential queen, who knows what was going to happen oh, as yeah. we go forward? But certainly as a potential leader, she maintained her dignity. The, the shot of her walking away yeah. with the robes <laughs> streaming off her as she walks, and, and you just Great. hear the dogs coming. It's just brilliant. Uh, this all leads to the Battle of the Bastards, and some, there's some fallout mm. we'll talk about after the Battle of the Bastards. Battles on Game of Thrones are big. Now I'll say my personal still favorite battle is the Battle of Blackwater. Mm. Low budget. Yeah, those shots we talked about, Dennis, up against a brick wall yes. probably in a parking lot with Stephen, <laughs> Stephen Delane having to act. But I still think there's an emotional punch to that episode written by George R. R. Martin that is, is, uh, is not been topped, though the battles have exceeded in just yes. the way they shot. I can That shot again, so epic. But this all leads up to the Battle of the Bastards, which was a pretty fantastic event, Dennis. Yeah, yeah, one of the best episodes of television ever. Mm. Ever put to, you know, that you've seen. Uh, just the way it was done and the way that it was handled and how we, we've been able, and I talked about it before, about earned moments. Like, mm -hmm. you, these things are earned because they've been built up. It's not like, okay, these guys are just gonna fight. We see a spectacle. It's not right. spectacle for spectacle's sake. Mm -hmm. It's, you have the emotional weight. And, and yes, yeah, so we've been talking about this, this shot right here behind me. Yeah. One of the best shots in the entire series. Yeah. One of the like, best shots I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, yeah, it's just this moment where you know who Jon Snow's character is, and that's the way that he has chosen to go out. He's not going to run. Yeah. He's like he's accepted his fate. He's like, all right, I'm a, just a gonna. fate he kind of created for himself when yeah. he charged in. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is part of his character too. Yeah. But yeah. But but yeah, uh, Battle of the Bastards, so expertly directed, mm -hmm. shot, yeah. acted, everything yeah. about about that episode is yeah. is, is top notch. Battle of Bastards. Too. Yeah, I mean, this is what it's like to love Transformers against the hordes and everybody <laughs> hates you, so no, no, no. Uh, I will say, this is what's so great about Touché, sir. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, I can't go with you on the Blackwater thing, Ken, because I'm not a massive fan of sea battles, and I felt this, uh -huh. this, I love land battles. I'm a massive fan of the opening of Gladi Gladiator, all the battle scenes in Braveheart. If, when you can do really well land battle scenes, shoot them well, especially for a television show yeah. like this, the shot of them the pit of oh. humanity that oh, John oh, is God, trying to yeah. climb out of. That shot, as a person who served in the military before, that v feeling is always a possibility on a battlefield. And so to see it come to life in such a visceral way, I thought was just a, a credit to all the filmmakers and the actors and all the extras and everybody involved in that shot. So to me, the entire battle itself is so powerful because as I said at the beginning of this program, I felt all the seasons had been leading to this battle. Right. This battle for so many reasons and so many character reasons as well. And John really showed himself. Yes, he was stupid to run out with Rickon, but that is Jon Snow. And if you're gonna have Jon Snow, you gotta let him be Jon Snow. And sometimes he knows nothing and he just runs out there and does stupid stuff and you've gotta save his ass. And it was great to see the Knights of the Vale coming up. There was such a moment in that battle when he's buried. Yes. They did it so well yeah. that I, for about two seconds, was like, oh, he's gonna die. Yeah. Just got caught up in the moment. Yeah. Rachel, this battle. And that moment works on a thematic level, too. That's what yeah. I love about yeah. Miguel Sapochnik's direction of the mm. entire battle. It's technically perfect, mm. like yeah. Dennis said. But 
for him, for them to be surrounded and for him to feel suffocated and like that he's getting pushed down to the ground. He's been struggling for six seasons about yeah. his identity and, and being a bastard and finding his place in the world and then dying and then coming back and having to be a leader. And it's like, it's suffocating him. And in that moment, he claws to the surface yeah. because he makes the decision to live, mm -hmm. to, to fight back, to fight the good fight. And it's so emotional inside this crazy, uh, visceral experience of a battle. And I mm. think it's the thematic connections that were made were my favorite part of it. It's just technically mm. pro proficient and amazing, but also emotional in the best way possible. Like Dennis yeah. said, it's not just action for action. Right. Sake, John. I, I think this is his Targaryen nature coming out in that oh. moment. Yeah. I think it's his Targaryen blood coming out in that like moment it. to yeah. fight, to survive, Absolutely. no matter what it takes. Fire know? and blood. Right, exactly. So we know what happens in the battle. We know Ramsay's taken out. We know John wins, but there's the fallout. And good fallout, bad fallout. Mm. The aftermath. Mm -hmm. I, maybe that's more appropriate to say. We have one of the stars of the season is <sighs> Leanna Mormont, oh, 10 years old, calling everyone out. Yeah. Lord Manderley, Lord Glover. <laughs> I love this scene. You know, Lord Manderley, your sons were killed mm -hmm. at, the, at the Red Wedding, yet you did not answer the call. <laughs> Lord Glover, yeah. you did not answer the call. And it is this 10-year-old girl facing, in this world you talked about, Rachel, in Man's World Westeros, mm -hmm. much like the real world, this 10-year-old girl yep. stands up to all of them and says, this is my king. And John has to accept in that moment, this was a, this was a rousing, had, you had to like get excited, John, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Bear, I mean, she's, I love, just the first scene when you see her, she's like, don't tell me what I need to do. I need to take care of Bear Island. That's what yes. I need to take care of the people of my, so that, and so that when she makes these men, yeah. Of, of 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 status and power and nature makes them bend their knees to John through her speech there. I mean, where you find an actress like this, I don't know. Yeah, but and her ability amazing. to bring it to life that character and make us immediately with very limited amount of screen time make her a massive hero in our minds. Right. You mm -hmm. know, and as to what you talked about, Richard, John kind of now he has an identity. He's the yeah. king of the north. Yeah. Yeah. He might learn a little bit more of, of who he is. Right. Uh, but Leanna made this happen. John made this happen. This whole thing. But what do you think about this moment? It's it's because it mirrored so much what happened with Rob and, you know, instead yep. of the mm. young wolf, he's the yes. white wolf. And, and to have everybody stand in unison, because the series has been about people splintering off and breaking apart and alliances falling apart and backstabbing and all this stuff. And, and Leanna leads this charge to get everybody to come together in the North. Not just because of what's coming, because mm -hmm. most of them just want to go bury their heads in the sand and ignore right. what's coming, but she sh she shames them all into like doing their duty, and I'm like, good for her. Yeah. And and John accepts the mantle. Now the downside is Sansa. Yeah, it could have been her, and it's another mm. example of the world where a bastard is valued more highly than a woman, yeah. and. I'm really curious to see where that goes yeah. this season. I think that that's really important because this is just as much Sansa's victory as it was John's. It was. And you got Baelish giving Sansa that side eye, Dennis, kind of yes. looking out like, this what you want? <laughs> this bastard brother of yours taking your crown? Is this what you want? Well, this yeah, he's, yeah he's going to plant those seeds in, in her mind. And, and now that she is playing the game, she's going to be more interested in that. But, mm -hmm. however, I feel like if she does stick with John, she can be that side that... that that John is not good at. He's not good at the politics mm -hmm. and the power plays. He's good at inspiring men and having them lead him in the battle part. Um, you know, and then Game of Thrones in general has a very warped uh, perception of love. Yeah. And, and you have Jon Snow who now is not, it, it's kind of strange to say, but he's not shackled by love anymore. He already yeah. had his love and she's gone away. Right. Or you had Rob, what he did and mm -hmm. ultimately got him killed. You yeah. have. All the things, if you watch Game of Thrones and watch any of the love yeah. stories, they Don't all, yeah, they, yeah, really. basically <laughs> love is like the worst thing <laughs> possible <laughs> that you can do. Yeah. Uh, We'd be okay, John. Yeah, yeah. it's all about we'll marrying fight. for power and yeah. wealth and all, right. all that stuff. Anytime you do anything for love, you're just... Yeah. Yeah. So for now, John is he doesn't have that anymore because he's already moved past. Yeah, absolutely. A couple more things in the North we want to talk about before we move to the South and the East. But in the North, we got Bran. I know you're not a fan of the Bran storyline. You know what? A lot of people aren't. Even book readers, right? Right, Rachel? There, there's a, um, a lack of, of physicality, of momentum, of yeah. doing things. A lot of walking so and waiting. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of being carried around in the yeah. snow and waiting. And so, like, there's, you know, it's hard to relate when everything sort of just slows down. Yeah. And like Dennis said earlier, he's used as exposition. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, pref I like it better than most people because 
it's a fantasy series. And sure. it's easy to forget that through a sure. lot of the seasons. And I think the that's why yeah. there's such an audience of people that came in for the for the politicking and the power grabs and the, and the interpersonal relationships. That's a huge part of the series. But at the end of the day, it is a fantasy series. And Bran is a linchpin in right. that side of the stories, like the fact that he's a warg and now he's the three-eyed raven and what that could mean, not just to fill in backstories and mm-hmm. tell people who they really are, but in theory, you know, um, it's his showdown to have with the Night's King. That's yeah, what they set up last season. It's not necessarily totally. John versus the Night's King. So there's a lot to come with that that I think maybe yeah. will help with Yeah, I don't problems. disagree with Dennis and a lot of other people's <laughs> thoughts on that story sometimes lingers. There's a reason they cut him out of season five. Mm-hmm. They didn't need a lot of that. But there's some interesting things to come out of this, mm-hmm. which is... Uh, Benjamin Stark as yeah. Yeah. cold hands, not cold hands, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> returning. Um, uh, you also have, uh, you know, the the flashback to the formation of the White Walkers, yeah. which was uh, the Children of the Forest. Big. Of the forest. And then, of course, this thing happens where someone needs to hold the door, John. Oh. Yeah. How did you feel about do, that? Don't, don't. Oh, honey, <laughs> we've come to that. Why are the guy that's like so emotional all the time? No, listen, that was so powerful. And I forget, I'm sorry if I can't remember the actor's name, but the uh, guy who Christian Nard. Christian Nard. Yeah. He's so good at playing at playing that character. And when we get the reveal, and it is kind of a confusing reveal with yeah. the war game. Mm-hmm. Like, is he time traveling? Like, what's this all about? And you have this, and then Hodor, and then you hear where it's from. Yeah. And then you, you just get emotional because he sacrificed himself to this horde of zombies. They were coming after. Uh, Brand and them, and, and it's just, it just to me, his his portrayal throughout the entire series has yeah. been no perfect, mm-hmm. and you can walk a tightrope with a guy like that that can become maudlin, yeah. or it can become annoying. But yeah, he was always so right, bit of a joke. But he was always so earnest yeah. and believable and vulnerable. And in that end moment, it's really rarely do characters get in this series a hero moment before they die, yeah. Yeah. and Hodor yeah. really had one. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Hodor. Yeah. Hodor. 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 Oh. Rachel, this was a life of service, essentially. He was yeah. born, bred, and created, in a way, for this moment, for the fate of the realm and the world. Did it get you? Oh my god, that entire sequence. And not just Hodor, but Summer. The four Summer dire wolves yes. in this Leaf. series. Leaf. 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 Yeah. And, and the three-eyed <laughs> raven. Like It was just an expertly crafted um, sequence of events of, of, of Bran, you know, going in, in, into a flashback on his own, which he shouldn't have done, and getting grabbed by the Night's mm-hmm. King and setting off this chain of events. And then to have that, that revelation of Hodor just happens in this really rhythmic, and you, you see the, the flashback and then you see Hodor and then you hear hold the door, Mira's yelling it, and then all of a sudden you go, oh my God, this is how he became who he mm-hmm. is. And then a beat later, oh my God, this is how he dies and he... It just, there's a mind-blowing aspect to it, <laughs> it within the emotion. It makes yeah. those t-shirts that came out after season one of Hodor, <laughs> quote yeah. Hodor, yep. not as funny anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little sad. Dennis, number two questions for you. Uh, number one, have you ever cried to, did you cry at this moment? I cry all the time. <laughs> uh, just, people just don't see it. It's, it's just not on camera. It's all, all, all in the background. <laughs> yeah, it is emotionally got to me because yeah. he, his character is one of the few characters that you would say is closer to the pure pure good yeah Mm -hmm. uh he does everything for other people and and basically yeah his life got because they said before this happened to him where this kind of almost time travel connection happens to him he was not normal because he was bigger but he he, but he could talk he could speak Mm -hmm. he had his own name Mm -hmm. and then because of this he Mm -hmm. ended up being what we know now as hodor and then the rest of his life is pretty much all just Serving the Starks. Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't, Rachel, just a, a kick to the head by a horse like no, a lot of people would thought. No, poor uh, Willis. Final, final <laughs> note in the north, then I do want to move on. Sandor Clegane, the Hound, returns. <sighs> one, of, one of my favorite characters, and I know favorite character of a lot of people mm-hmm. because shades of gray that go from bad to, oh, wait, maybe he's good and I understand mm-hmm. him. He returns. Uh, this answers some question for us smug book readers. Yep. Maybe, <laughs> but I think season seven might reopen up some of those questions. Uh, but, John, yeah. I, I, this is where you and Dennis's perspective as uh, oh. non-book readers really, really helps someone like me. Did this moment, were you shocked, surprised? How did you feel about the Hound returning? Uh, I was happy to see the Hound return yeah. because I'd loved him so much. And even his ending with Brienne, it would have been a noble ending. Yeah. He fought her to a T and it lost eventually. You know, and he had this uh, 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 issue with the mountain as well as his brother. So there was all of this that was going on with him. There's so much pain. So if he'd died, it'd have been fine. Yeah. But 
When he came back, I was really happy to see him back. I love that actor who portrays the hound. And that, and you talk about love, Dennis. Don't even love religion. You get your ass killed when you love religion, too. You know, that whole episode yeah. where he came back. Brother All Ray. those people were wiped out before. And then, of course, the hound, which we love now. He's, you know, he's done classic wrestling here. Like we yeah. hated him at the beginning. And through his actions through the season, we've been with him long enough that yeah. we eventually are on his side now. And when he goes out to for revenge with those guys and, can, and meets yeah. up with the Brotherhood Without Banners, it's such a great moment to see him yeah. back with his boys, so to so to speak, and then and, and then you know do what he does best, which is kill. Yeah, and, and next week we're gonna talk a lot about what might happen in season seven. I have mm. so many questions about the brother oh, yeah. going north of the wall. Uh, but Dennis the Hound coming back, brother Ray kind of makes him feel better, and then goes. What do you think about this? Episode? I mean, I was surprised that he came back, but I I was fine with him. I thought the way that we originally thought he had died was. Mm. A good way to go. I mean, good he, yeah. he defended Arya, and then he also, mm -hmm. Arya kind of left him alone, mm -hmm. you know, to almost kind of suffer. Uh, but him coming back, hopefully there's just a, a bigger, longer redemption story for him. But like Roka said, that he, his character starts out where you're like, oh, I hate that guy, he's a bad guy, and then you realize he's not as bad as you think. He had, there is some sort of twisted honor within him. He's not always, yeah. I mean, he beats up people, takes their money, he's killed a lot of people, but there is some part of him that is good, and yeah. I think maybe maybe we'll see that. He seems to be at peace, Rachel, but Lem Lemon Cloak comes back and kind of awakens some anger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that cold open in that episode was such a fake out because it's like, as soon as you're watching it and, and it's peaceful and people are building a sept and Brother Ray is there <laughs> yeah. and the hound is carrying a log all by himself and and you just go, no, this this, is, this cannot last. Yeah. Yeah. This is too happy, guys. And sure enough, um, the rogue members of the Brotherhood mm -hmm. Without Banners come in and ruin it all and and sort of bring um, back some of the that cynical part uh, right. of the hound's nature and, and, and he gives into that and, and chases after them. So. But I think he's a good fit for the Brotherhood Without Banners. Yeah. I like that it's, again, it's paralleling what happened in season two when he was captured by them and he, and he right. killed Beric Dondarrion in a trial by combat and then Beric comes back and he goes on his way. But for him to come full circle back to them to theoretically fight this larger threat that's coming up, yeah. it, it, they, they, it just makes sense um, yeah. for his character. And, mm. and I think he'll fit in well with them. And I think he's going to have to go back to some of his fighting ways because yeah. that's what's needed right now. And uh, yeah, it's always good to have Rory McCann back. Yes. He's a great guy. I've actually uh, uh, stood in a Comic-Con line drunk with him. It was wow. one of my fun nice. <laughs> He's a fun guy. Uh, <laughs> let's move down to the south. We got a lot of things going on here to get to. We talked a lot about Cersei. We'll touch upon that. But I want to start with the High Sparrow because coming out of season five, Jonathan Price killed it as the High yeah. Sparrow. He is this maniacal master manipulator, but he, he was also going after some easy <laughs> targets, I mm -hmm. think, too. But uh, then this all builds up to his big end, which could have been anticlimactic from some people, but let's talk about the High Sparrow, the faith militant. John, you talked about the religion. It can sometimes burn you in this area. Yeah, and boy, did he get burnt I mean, <laughs> in, in this ending. But I didn't think it was anticlimactic at all. Okay. I thought, I thought this, she, he's not there to have some kind of deserved death. He's there to serve Cersei's purpose. She's the larger character, so she had to have her godfather mm. moment. Everybody's got to go. Yeah. And so he's just part of it. And I thought it was a brilliant way to do it because uh, as powerful as he thought himself, we always knew he wasn't as powerful as he thought he was. So the way he dies symbolizes how little powerful he really was mm -hmm. in the whole world of the Game of Thrones. And, and, but I thought it was really well done the entire season. Them, The mountain ripping that dude's head off. Like everything yeah. they were trying to do, <laughs> yeah. you know, this high spiral. They, he was, and we saw, just like any, just like most uh, leaders in any field, religious, uh, politics, whatever, there are manipulations to be made to stay yeah. in power. You saw behind the veneer of this whole mm -hmm. fake trying to help the world thing. And you're right, John the Price is a master actor, so you give a part like that to him to, yeah. to discover the nuance, to show the different levels. And the way he played, I thought him and Glenn, uh, uh, Lena Headley had yeah. some of the best uh, uh, moments in Game of Thrones in this entire series, yeah. entire I, season, rather. I like that take, John, because yeah. I'm not, I don't think it's anticlimactic, but I remember when it happened, I thought, Oh, and it all built to that. Mm. Okay, but it was a great moment. Wins and winners, one of the best episodes mm. of yeah. the show ever. Yeah. But but Rachel, I like John's take that no, he, this was all part of what needed to happen for Cersei. See, I looked at it a little bit differently in the sense of I remember watching season six the first time and feeling like this guy is playing the Game of Thrones better than no. a lot of people. The way he played Marjorie, the way he played Cersei, mm -hmm. the way he played Tommen. I mean. 
playing Tom is not that. Good. <laughs> yeah. But like, I mean, the way Cersei and Jaime were teaming up with the Tyrells, they were yeah. going to storm the Sept and yeah. kill him. And but he had manipulated that whole thing by telling Tom something he Tom and yeah. something he shouldn't tell his mother. Yeah. He went and told his mother. I think the. High Sparrow knew that he was going mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. I thought there was a lot of chess moves that he was making that I was really impressed by. And what happened at the Sept, I took as ego. Yeah. He he had done it. Yeah. He he had taken away every last you yeah. know uh, security Cersei had. She he took away her son. He basically put you know a puppet king up that he was pulling the strings mm -hmm. for. He was having this trial for Loras, carving this seven-pointed oh, yeah. star on his head, about to have a trial for Cersei, and he was he was king of the world at that moment. And his pride, Marjorie's sitting there telling him, something's, something's happening, happening here. Mm -hmm. Cersei orchestrated this get out, and he his pride wouldn't let him mm -hmm. believe that. And so yeah. that was a comeuppance when that Absolutely. place blew, and he blew with it. Hubris, Dennis, <coughs> hubris, and one of the best sequences on the show ever. Oh, for sure. And then I feel like he ranks up there. I mean, we talk about uh, Ramsey Snow, you talk about Joffrey, and then you talk about Viserys. He was another character that I consider to be more of a villain than mm -hmm. whose death was very satisfying because, yeah. you know, his fanaticism was driving, you know, all these things just because he wanted to be high and mighty. Like, like Rachel was saying, like the way he died, I actually felt uh, the proper way for him to go because he, mm -hmm. he, was, he was holding court and he was mm -hmm. having this you know, this this pretentious like thing where 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 he didn't see that look, they're not gonna play by whatever rules that you think you're 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 doing here. Right. And she just took him out and I, I thought that was great. Uh, I do, I love that moment. And we got Cersei in power. She is she's now the queen and it's well learned like we talked about up top. But now, you know, uh, I wanna kinda jump a little bit to Jamie. Uh, what happened in River Run and with him kind of returning. It ends with Jamie kind of returning, going, what has my sister done? This is what I tried to stop the Mad King from doing. Uh, Rachel, I want to start with you on the journey of, of Jamie Lannister. One of my favorite characters, so I'm happy to <laughs> talk about it. The thing with Jamie, and I know this is going to sound bizarre and wrong, one of his redeeming qualities, even from early on was that he loved his sister. Mm -hmm. Not in the correct way, <laughs> but, but his, uh, his, motive, his, own way. his motivation was always to get back to her. Right. Everything he did was always to get back to her. And when he finally did, but with their daughter's body, mm -hmm. they had oh. this moment where like it's us against the world. And yeah, it's icky, but it's yeah. still t weirdly relatable. Mm -hmm. And when he's stripped of the king's guard and told you gotta to go off to River Run, he's separated from her and doesn't see her final fall into embracing full villainy. Mm -hmm. So when he goes to River Run, which I think Bronn's back, we got Bronn, so he that was Bron, good for yeah. River Run. Yeah. Um, he met up with Brienne, and the Jamie Brienne storyline is yep. one of my favorites of the entire series. Mm -hmm. There, the way they view each other, they see the best in each other. And I think it's not a romantic relation. I do not ship them. I just <laughs> love how they reflect each other and see the yeah. best in each other. And they have a really poignant moment in River Run, and I loved that. And so he's, he has that. And he also takes down River Run in a very clever way, mm -hmm. using Ed Muir. <sighs> And the blackfish goes oh, out in a kind of disappointing manner. I was manner. a little disappointed with blackfish's death, that, that but uh, yeah, great. I get it. You mean off screen? Yeah. yeah. Off screen. Now that death, I was mad about. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. so they, they're like, hey, hey, hey. Oh, he died. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Because uh, we brought born. him back for like, and then that's the thing. Like, yeah. you brought him back for like a scene, yeah. and then you're like, wait, what? What? Yeah. Yeah. What just happened? Yeah. Because we know it's cursory as watched. Like he's supposed to be this amazing, you know, tactician, military tactician fighter, and you guys know in the books, it's very well documented how what an incredible fighter he is. So to have him go out like that was really, was I thought was we, one of the worst parts of the to. season. Yeah, we didn't have to. It was one of those screaming yeah. at the screen yeah. moments. Yeah. Just go with them. Yeah. Yeah. Get yeah. out of there. Go help your niece. Yeah. 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 Um, but, but to have all of that, Jamie go through all of that, mm -hmm. now he's sort of putting his best self forward, yeah. only to mm -hmm. return to King's Landing to this mess that his sister right. just made, yeah. and who's gone full villain, and who's basically gone Mad Queen, mm -hmm. like right. she's yeah. she's the incarnation of Ares at this she, point, she is. and that to Jamie, that's that's going to be very hard to deal with because this yeah. is the woman he person that he loves most right. in the world, 
and I think he's going to really struggle with that. Setting him up as one of the suspects to be the Valencar. <laughs> yes, the prophesized Valencar. Uh, let's uh, touch on uh, on Cersei there a little bit. There, this this rise to power, impressive. We talked a, about it, but some 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 maybe some final thoughts on Thirsty. 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 You can comment that too. <laughs> Cersei, or Cersei, yeah. or C. Um, <laughs> her rise, her her path in this season, Dennis. It was it was a big climb to power. Well, yeah, I mean, after what happened to her at the end of last season, mm -hmm. there, there's yeah. just, you know, a drive in her for even further. I mean, mm -hmm. w with all her children now dead, there's no mm -hmm. connection left for her. And then the thing is, uh, when Rachel's talking about, yes, uh, Jamie uh, loves her, say, and, and it's not the right kind of love, <laughs> but if we just take that apart and just think about them, he loves her more than she loves him. Him. Absolutely. Yeah. And so that's why her doing this is it makes sense for him. He doesn't care. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care. He's willing to like go away with her and do whatever. Right. But she wants this. And yeah. she's she's kind of willing to, to, to even lose him for, for, for this. For that. Out to cement her legacy, John. Yeah, this is a driven woman. This is a, a strip the gender away. This is a driven human being. Mm -hmm. who wants to achieve what she wants to achieve. And, you know, and you know, what you brought up earlier, I think, is a great point, Rachel, when you talked about, you know, she's a woman in a man's world. She has to survive mm -hmm. in a certain way, and she adapts the tactics to survive. Are they vicious? Are they evil? Are they damn cruel? Absolutely. But I also think there's a mastery in what she's doing mm -hmm. when you watch as a viewer to watch this show. Her character is so, so engrossing. Like, you cannot take your eyes off her. And progressing through this season, definitely, like Dennis said, what happened at the end of the last season, you're just left with, is she broken? How can she come back from this? They revive the mountain. She has a bodyguard now that gives her strength from behind of what she's going to do. And then mm -hmm. that carries her through. And I thought the way, she, like, I want to reiterate this again, the way she killed Sparrow makes sense. The way she killed the nun. That's, oh, yeah. how, that's how Cersei, when you personally do something to her, that's how Cersei Look takes out. care of you. Mm -hmm. With the High Sparrow, it was more about uh, a, a larger picture. So therefore, yeah. blowing him up in a public way sends the message to anyone else who's mm -hmm. trying to do anything against her. Right. This is your end result. Yeah. And right. what she does to the nun is like, if you personally do what you do to me, you're going to pay in a certain way. So I, I've grown to respect her very much. You know, whatever my feelings about her villainy are, mm -hmm. I, I respect her as a character very, very much. You are the master of vengeance revenge here. You're the right. official, <laughs> she does it well. you're the official keeper of that here. Right. Uh, Rachel Cersei. <laughs> Yeah, she she holds revenge close to her heart. It's what she, it's all she has left yeah. with with the kids and the family and the realm. Like so, it, it it's it's full fledged embracing the villainy, embracing the dark side. A little killing for killing sake. It, it basically, like it's just is you gonna make a statement like blowing up the Sept of Baylor in that way to to tell everybody take notice. Like you thought I was down and out. I am not. You know I am now your queen. Look out. Mm. Right, because the, the other option is, look at all the stuff I've done that's led to all the death of my kids. Yeah. Oh, I should feel depressed. I should feel, oh, well, I'm a terrible person. No, she goes, no, screw it. I'm going for it. I want the title. I want the power. Yeah. Yep. It's almost like the, the potential of Tom and killing himself. Or if she, I don't know if she accounted for that, but it looks like she didn't care, John. Right, she didn't. She rolled right into her revenge almost immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think she felt like she'd lost them already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. No, I think I, Dennis, she that's... lost them to Marjorie yeah, already. Yeah. Yeah. In, into the high spiral. Into the high spiral. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She definitely <laughs> felt season, uh, uh, what is it, uh, by, by three, uh, she already feels she's losing them to Marjorie. Yeah. Uh, and she definitely lost Sir Pounce to Marjorie. Oh. Um, <laughs> but uh, definitely, Dennis, I think that's a great point. Um, some things, uh, one final big note of in the South, uh, a couple things we want to talk about is, uh, uh, well, well, actually, one big one, which is Sam and his little journey to the Citadel. Oh, old town, yeah. uh, stop off at his dad's place for a nice family <laughs> dinner, meet the new girlfriend, <laughs> you know, get, get told you're going to be killed or whatever. That was, that, was, uh, that was good. We finally meet Randall Tarley. Oh, Rachel. boy. Yeah, I mean, we. This should be a poll at some point. Like, who gets Father of the Year? Yeah. In this world, because like Tywin, some, uh, Randall, yeah. Bruce Bolton. Bruce, like, yeah, yeah. Come on, it, like so. Randall Tyler is up there. Yeah. Um, it was a, a little rushed. We only got like. Little tiny scenes yeah. with them on the boat um, yeah. at Horn Hill, and then finally in Old Town. Um, but the important takeaway is well, two. Sam's still coming into his own, yep. still coming into you know, mm. uh, being braver than ever he ever thought he could. Right. Um, and then the other thing's Heart's Bane. Like yeah. he, there's another Valyrian steel sword in the mix, which is good news for everybody yep. up north. Yeah. And um, and I do love the last shot of him in the library at the yeah. Citadel in Old Town because. 
that would be my happy place uh, of library of that size and magnitude. And the look on his face would have been my look (laughs) if I had walked into a room like that. So uh, he's going to be learning some stuff, some important stuff in that room, I think. uh, And probably meeting uh, some important maesters. A a certain Jim Broadbent character, maybe. Yeah, possibly. Dennis, Sam's journey. Uh, I mean, we got to meet his father, who who's famous for being the only person who defeated what, Robert in battle. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, in battle. yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, it just gave more insight into why Sam is the way he is. That dinner table scene with his father, where he's just berating him, and yeah. you know, and and he's just taking it. And you see why he's the way he is. Why he lacks some of the confidence, especially in mm-hmm. in some of the other areas like fighting and whatnot. And so I, and then he's gonna hopefully play a bigger part in this upcoming season just with knowledge. He's not the fighter. Mm. Yeah. He's the guy who's going to bring some knowledge and help hopefully Jon Snow and whoever else mm. is actually wants to fight the White Walkers and the right. Whites from the North. Right. And uh, I want to talk, uh, Bran, with you, John. Uh, not Bran, excuse me, yeah, Sam. Yeah, Sam. Uh, Sam, Bran, Sam. Sure. You know, comment below. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Sam, Sam Tarly, uh, have you ever had an uncomfortable dinner like this when you're meeting, <laughs> you when you're meeting a girlfriend's course. parents? Yes. <laughs> Are you kidding? Of course. Especially when they serve pancakes at dinner. And I was yeah. like, this isn't dinner, this is <laughs> breakfast. And I got shouted down real bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We stopped eating a week later. So, But like, no, this is this was a fan. Like, you have all had these kind of uncomfortable yeah. dinners in our lives, which I thought was really well done. And some of us have seen these overbearing fathers for our mm. friends in our lives. So some of us have, these over, have had these overbearing fathers in our lives. And so I thought it all hit the right notes perfectly, especially for Sam, because Sam is being set up to be this hero. So you have mm. to make everybody villainous who's coming against him, or extra villainous to make yeah. Sam stand out as a really noble hero, as close to Hodor as we get. Yeah. I think, yeah. uh, you know, and so purity. you're right. Yeah, purity. He's mm-hmm. coming into his own. He really cares about Gilly, cares about the child. He gets, But I think that moment he goes back and gets heart's pain is such an awesome moment yes. for him yes. stepping forward and then going and, and, you know, going with the maesters. And I think this could lead to some a certain somebody getting rid of Grayscale. We'll never oh. know if he's going to have some kind of idea how to, yeah. Mm-hmm. So well, like, well, that <laughs> yeah. transitions, John, quite excellent, <laughs> into the East. Let's head over to the East in our last segment of uh, the last discussion segment of the day, uh, which uh, we got a lot of stuff going on in the East. Uh, just, just general for what's going on with Danny. You got Arya over in Bravos and that whole storyline. Uh, and I want to talk a little about Tyrion, Sons of the Harpy, Jorah, my man Sir Jorah Mormont, yes, uh, right. being sent off to find a cure for Grayscale by the woman he loves, who was like, seen, check mark. Um, <laughs> Let's talk about Danny Dennis, Daenerys Targaryen. Well, I mean, let's, let's talk about the ending of the uh, yep. of the the season. She's finally on her way to Westeros. <laughs> yes, because the the, the complaint about Danny's storyline sometimes has been that that, that mm-hmm. it's dragged a little bit because she's been talking about going there and talking right. about that stuff. But she's uh, been across the narrow sea for the mm-hmm. longest time, and now you actually see her. Yeah. going there but she in all fairness she needed to build an army you can't just go to Westeros yeah. and hope to build the army there she had no money she had no loyalties I mean even now heading there and we'll talk about it in the next uh, mm-hmm. episode she doesn't know Westeros yeah. at yeah. all and so she's handicapped there um, but yeah I mean the season before when she meets up with, with Tyrion is one of my favorite moments yeah. because it's it's Tyrion who's my favorite character, meeting up with with another character that he finally believes can be a leader that's actually good for the people. Yeah, and a great moment when she makes him the hand of the queen. Yeah, yeah. Um, Daenerys Targaryen, Rachel, floundered for me a lot in season four and five. Learning how to rule, getting caught yeah. up from stuff, got to deal with the sons of the harp. He flies off. Um, here a little bit, a uh, little bit more by choice wants to go. It's it's a little different play, a little different than, than I was familiar with the story before. Um, but for me, I was always a little disappointed with Danny. She, she was a good prospect. She started off strong, couple good seasons, <laughs> and then she got injured yeah. and didn't rebound. But in season six, she starts off in a bad spot, <laughs> ends up in a great spot. Yeah, the, Danny's an excellent example of through the course of the seasons, she's got really high highs, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, there's a lot of sitting around and waiting. And they tried to fill some of that yeah. stuff in Marine with the Sons of the Harpy, and a lot of it didn't work. And even in this season, there was a lot of walking to get to the yep. Stothrak mm-hmm. and with Cal Morrow and, um, and, and being, you know, rescued or attempted rescue by Jorah, Jorah and Dario. Dario yeah. and, and, like, there was a sort of, like, but let's just get there. We know that she needs to get to the Kalasars. We know yeah. that she, get, she needs to get to the Doge Colleen. And uh, just so happens uh, all the calls are meeting. Yeah. And she's going to have a little showdown. And, I mean, there's no denying the moment 
was spectacular. Yes. Coming out of the burning building, everybody kneels to her, and now all of a sudden she's got like 100,000 Dothraki yeah. horde at her uh, beckon. So she comes back to Marine, and Tyrion is one of my favorite characters too, Dennis, but like, he, this was, that was a tough season for him. He was yeah. making all these decisions in Marine in her name. Not a lot of them panned out. Yeah. Like, Tyrion in season two was ruling so, like, the Top decision, the, he, he was doing everything right. He wasn't getting recognized for it, but yeah. he was doing everything right. And so his decision making in Marine felt like a placeholder. Like, we've got to have him doing something, so mm -hmm. we're going to have him come up with these ideas about, he does, and he and Varys do discover who the Sons of the Harpy are, which is just basically a conglomeration of yeah. people from various slaver cities. Yeah. And he tries to, to negotiate with them. Mm -hmm. But two episodes later, nah, we don't want to negotiate. Yes. We're mm -hmm. going to attack Marine. And then Danny finally gets back. So it's buying time. Mm -hmm. But it's made up for with both Danny and Tyrion in their final scenes together, where yeah. Tyrion admits that he has spent a life of, the, he lost faith in life. Like, he, yeah. just, he doesn't have anything to believe in. And in, when he was traveling with Jorah, and Jorah was like, just espousing how amazing Danny was, <laughs> Tyrion's like, uh, I don't know about that. Yeah. And this is his story of coming around to her. And, yeah. and I, I haven't believed in anything, but I believe in you. Yeah. And she yeah. believes in him, and they're sitting next to each other on the stairs. She's not on her throne, and he's not below her. They're equals in that moment, and they make the decision to finally head for Westeros. And so a lot of the treading water stuff mm -hmm. and, and whatnot was worth it for that and then for the big final Yeah, sale. I absolutely agree. The, my note was move too fast, question mark, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Sure. Sometimes, John, these mm. stories feel like they linger or they don't have a purpose. Looking at you, Dorne, in season five. <laughs> oh my gosh. And Dorne was just a blip in season six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, this, this, this rise to a, a return to power for yeah. Danny. I don't know. I don't, you know, take it? I don't know if there's much more I can add than, to yeah. what Rachel said, but I will say like I what I enjoy. It's basically like when you go see the what the Hangover, when you go see the second one, it's a rehash of the first one. Yeah, her going through the fire is a rehash. It's like yeah. essentially going. You know what? We know we kind of messed it up a little bit for these two seasons. Here she comes out of the fire. We're going to start this again. We're going to try this again. <laughs> reset it's, button. Yeah, reset button. Basically, I felt like it was because it felt like it was a bit manipulated to get her into that situation. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, would she do yeah. these kinds of things? But you're right. The shot of it was amazing. Mm -hmm. The scene is powerful. Right. Her coming out of the Fire. Nothing's more powerful than uh, Amelia Clark coming out of the fire as as a Daenerys, and so she embraces. She had that scene where she's on the dragon, telling Dothraki mm -hmm. what she's going to do to come with her. Very powerful scene. Once again, what we talked about earlier: female leaders coming into their power, embracing their strength, leading their people, and mm -hmm. she's going to do that. And of course, when she gets back to Marine, she handles business. Uh, has Grey Worm cut those two masters' heads yeah. out? Like it's she gets to the point. And I think Tyrion is a bad leader in Marine because he does not know the territory. Yeah, sure. It's a, yeah. it's a coach walking. I didn't. Pick the players. I don't know what to do with these guys. But if you walk, but if you, in King's Landing is what he knew. He knew yeah. what to play with. He knew yeah, who yeah. to play. With. He had stronger leadership around him as well to bounce off of. With with uh, with Marine, he only had uh, Lord Well, and Missandei and Grey Worm and Grey Worm, who are not necessarily <laughs> powerful leaders in their no, own right. Yeah. So it was right. a bunch of uh, it was a bunch of negotiators, and there should have been a leader. And so he did buy time. But when she came back, she took care of business. The important thing of Danny's <clears throat> story this year, there's a couple things. Uh, that is, she's where she needs to be, where we want her. As fans yeah. mm -hmm. sailing across the ocean with an alliance we can talk about and she dumped Dario yes. Yes. She finally did. <laughs> as a Jorah fan yeah. uh, <laughs> um, let's talk uh, quickly about this alliance we got Dorm. we got the Tyrells Varys is working behind the scenes we got a lot of Dothraki screamers uh, we got a big army heading west and we're gonna talk next week about what that means it's a big that's a big thing mm -hmm. but this alliance what do you think about this alliance coming together Rachel love it um, we talked about the females like yeah. the who's left of the Tyrells it's the Queen of Thorns it's Olenna yeah. she's yeah. the one that's left and say what you will about Dorne it is a, a very female-led society mm -hmm. especially at this mm -hmm. point with Doran out of the picture and so to have Danny you know unite with Olenna with the Sand Snakes and Ilaria with Yara yeah. and whatnot. It's like that. I love that coalition. I love that mm -hmm. coalition of female empowered women. I love the coalition of the cultures. I think there's going to be a lot of interesting lot things of going on with that. Mm -hmm. You know, the Dothraki horde and Westeros going to get interesting. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's it's all the right people, 
and they're all just like lined up against the Lannisters. Yeah, yeah so absolutely. Great. If you're going to attack, you want to attack on all possible fronts, land, sea, and air, and yep. they've got all that <laughs> covered. Yeah. They got it all covered, and so they're they're good to go with all their with all the people they have. And I'm I'm a massive fan of the Iron Island storyline with Yara and Greyjoy, yeah. uh, with Yara and sorry and and Theon. So to oh, me, I, for I forgot about them. No, yeah, you're right. Yeah, the Greyjoy, yeah, 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 they're their side. Yeah. And, and just to add a little bit to to Daenerys, my one of my favorite moments is the smirk she gives Yara when she tries to hit on her. Yeah. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic stuff. So to, so for me, Yara and Theon are the ones that I, I, I have a personal vested interest in those yeah. two and that storyline playing out. Euron now stepping forward as a, another main villain. I don't know how he's going to build all those ships in time to catch him, but he's yeah. supposedly <laughs> going to do it. But like this is this is really powerful to have all these people coming together and there's nothing more majestic than seeing all those sails yeah, at the same so. time mm -hmm. down and going forward and the With dragons the dragon playing overhead, yeah, yeah. Come on. All of that, stuff. just great stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we can talk a lot about Euron next week, but Dennis, this aligns your thoughts of where we're at. Well, I think the main thing I think uh, is being undersold is actually Elena Tyrell's yeah. alliance with them because <laughs> of the money factor. Remember, yeah. the Lancers have no more money anymore. Yeah. They've, they've stopped mining. I yeah. forgot, well, forgot what the, the gold, the, yeah. yeah. And so the Tyrells have been funding the kingdom. Now that's not the case mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. So where are they going to get their money? I mean, most of their loyalty came from money. Yep. Uh, and now you have the money on Danny's side. She's got loyal subjects and she's got money. So yeah. I think that's going to play a lot into her favor. I love it. I love it. Final thing we want to talk about here as we wrap up and go to, uh, we're going to pay homage to the, the, the those who have passed oh. this season. But what do you want to talk about? Arya Stark, Bravos, Jagannagar, or at least the man wearing Jagannagar's face, <laughs> and uh, the waif. This was a... <sighs> Rachel, <laughs> this, this, this... I was something looking forward to for, as a book reader, House of Black and White. A lot of things I like about it. It does kind of uh, meander and linger at times, but I like, oh, the show's going to kind of mm -hmm. bring Dragon back, make it, make it short to the point. I'm still wondering, what was the point? Yeah, nope. Uh, I've got no answers for you, unfortunately. <laughs> um, there were a lot of great moments, and Maisie Williams is great. amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I think it could have been done in one season. I don't think it could have been done in two, or yeah. didn't need to be do done in two. Um, I will say... But I did really like the Lady Crane storyline yes. and the, the play. And Richard the, Grant it, in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, there was a lot of sort of almost like meta stuff yes. going on mm -hmm. there, which was great commentary for the for the series. Um, and I and and Arya chose to be Arya instead of no one, which is great. Mm -hmm. I still take huge issue with the way that her fight with the Waif went down. Arya yeah. decides to leave, and then she's like sauntering around Skipping Bravos around. with bags of gold, <laughs> saying, "I need passage." And then the Waif comes up and stabs her in the gut. Like, no yeah. kidding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think Arya should have been smarter than that. Yep. But their final fight was well directed, well done. I loved the slice the candle cut to black. That made perfect sense because it was the only way in which Arya yeah. could beat the Waif in the, that condition. And and then, you know, to take the Waif's face back to Jockin and say, there, there you, you go. go. <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm like, okay, good. We'll I'm go. dropping out of college. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, for thanks for teaching me all yeah. of this thanks fun stuff this that I'm going to go use now against Walder Frey. Yeah. Um, so oh. another one off the list. Great. Yeah. Uh, all of that's great. It just... It took yeah. a long time. It, it left some questions. The, the Lady Crane <laughs> stuff is good. Look, even on Game of Thrones, if something's bad, it's still kind of Seriously, better, better than, than most of, of what everything else yeah. is on TV. <laughs> even Dorn. But uh, John, Arya, what, what, what do you think about this? Yeah, uh, I felt the same way. as we, uh, It's a flaccid storyline to yeah. me for the most part. It was like just repetitive and at times boring and at times like, okay, this is just filler between the great other mm -hmm. scenes that are happening. And I think it's uh, at times it had, it had dis a disservice to Maisie Williams and what she was doing with Arya because mm -hmm. she's really brought Arya into a very powerful moment. That being said, it was all worth it to get to that moment with Walder Frey because <laughs> as a Shakespeare fan, to see the Titus Andronicus moment where she says, I baked your sons into a pie <laughs> was worth it to me <laughs> and then to have the cut and her say, and like I said, as the expert on vengeance and, 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 yes. uh, and revenge, to her say, the last thing you're going to see is a Stark before you die. It was yeah. brilliantly done, very well, perfectly. So all of it led up to that moment, so I was fine with it in the long run, but it was at times a little tedious to yeah. get through and at times took you out of the episode. So I heard, though, House, uh, House Manderly serves the same pie. I, I was just going to say, I'm going to be a, a smug book reader for a second. You and get go, one. Thank you, Dan and DB, for getting Frey Pies in there. Yeah. I never, yeah. ever yeah. thought that part Frey from the book would make it into the show, yeah. but it did. Not you, you like exactly. them Frey Pies, Dennis? <laughs> uh, you it's can quote me on yeah. that. Uh, for Ari, yeah, I, I have the same same things where I do like her. Her character is actually one of my favorite mm -hmm. characters, yeah. and I think the storyline itself on the whole is good. It's, it didn't have to be you know, dragged out, but I think they did that just for timing purposes so yeah. they could get them lined up so that now in the next season she can hopefully reunite with the rest of the Starks. But right. 
But yeah, yeah, I see. At some points, it, it did kind of drag on, and, and that, that whole thing Rachel's talking about, like her yeah. walking around, made no sense. There's it points where people not. thought that was the way. I, thought, I, I was convinced it was, it was the way. Because she was Jockin'. acting so mm-hmm. stupidly, yeah. and, and yeah. the way yeah. she was walking with her hands behind her yeah. back, and you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like, Didn't have needle with her? Yeah, like, it just made no sense. Better. It and, was reminiscent <laughs> of the Beatles movie Help, where they're doing fake Ringos <laughs> to try to get the uh, the bad guys out, John. You know, help me here. <laughs> help He's me right. If you can, right? Yeah. <laughs> He's feeling down. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Skipping around, it's bad. All right, but guys. it ended well. It, it ended, ended well. well. It ended well, as a lot of things do on Game of Thrones. And speaking of ending well, sometimes your character ends bad. I've got a list of people, and I'm going to name them out here real quickly, and you guys could talk about one or two as we close here about uh, what you're going to miss about these characters. Hodor, rest in peace. Ramsay Bolton, King Tommen, Rickon Stark, Osha. Shaggy Dog, Grandmaster, Grand Meister Pycelle, <laughs> High Sparrow, Mace Tyrell, Marjorie Tyrell, Loras Tyrell, Sir Alistair Thorne, actually one of my favorites, Ollie, Walder Frey, Summer, The Blackfish, Tristan Martell, Leaf, Balin Greyjoy, The Waif, Lady Crane, Lancel Lannister, Brother Ray, Three-Eyed Raven, who's of course the Blood Raven, uh, Roose Bolton, Kevin Lannister, uh, one one, the big giant that we all love, Dor- uh, Prince Dor- uh, Doran yeah. Martell and Arya Hota. There are some of the big names that went out this season, a cleaning of the house, so to speak. But which one got to you most, John? Uh, well, two, I would say Marjorie Tyrell. I hate that we lost her, but I get it why yeah. uh, uh, Natalie Dormer had been wanting to kind of leave the series. Yep. So I get that. I really hate that they brought in Ian McShane for one episode. Yeah. Yeah. That mm-hmm. just that to me was a colossal waste. Uh, I, 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 I learned my lesson with Kieran Hines. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, another example, absolutely. I mean, Richard E. Grant was there for a couple of us, but really useless in the long yeah. run. And so I felt that, that, that those two deaths were for me like, oh, you yeah. know, because I, I love Marjorie two pieces and I loved how she was playing that she was she was just about to get to Cersei level uh, and be her match really right. and I love and it was a shame to see her cutting yeah. cut. absolutely Dennis uh, yeah Marjorie is one of them obviously Hodor I'll tell you who I'm not missing yeah <laughs> and, and it's not Ramsey because I think he was a, a great villain he is and, and yeah. he went out you know the way he should have went out uh, Tom <laughs> oh man not gonna miss that kid Mr. good riddance Tom yeah yeah Mr. Mr. Do Nothing man I mean, obviously, Joffrey is a character that, that yeah. you know, we, we all hated, be, but yeah. we hated him because he, he, he was, an, you know, evil, hate, selfish, yeah. brave, brave. Tommen, I disliked, and some people disagree with me, he did nothing. Yeah. He never had any type of strength whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can say, okay, he was, like, a good kid, but in the end, when he couldn't even bail out his mom, yeah. you know, and just let his mom rot there, and then... They're like, oh, what's what's Tom doing? Oh, he's just sitting in his room not eating. Like, yeah. <laughs> come on. Yeah. So him going, good riddance. The pushover king. Long yeah, yeah gone exactly. For you. Long gone for you. Rachel? Well, if we're going with good riddance, see ya, Ollie. Right. Thank you very <laughs> oh, much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm with you, though. I love Alisha Thorne. Yes. I thought he was the exact right foil for John. He even mm. says to John, or says to Sam about John, like, he acknowledged that John was a good man, yeah. he, but he also pointed out John's flaw, which was that in season five, John was trying to force an alliance between the Night's Watch and mm. the Wildlings. And the deep-seated hatred the Watch has of the Wildlings, John was overlooking how powerful that yeah. was. And Alistair recognized that, and it's why he killed John. And there's a nobility and a, a logic to that. And, yeah. I, and I thought that that actor and Alistair Thorne was great mm-hmm. as a foil yeah. for John, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Alistair um, Thorne to me is like, um, everyone knows my love of Stannis Baratheon yes. and that sometimes mm-hmm. people don't understand that, but Stannis is someone who's gonna do right no matter what it is and mm-hmm. even that sometimes includes burning you know, your kids. <laughs> uh, Sir Alistair Thorne in season four, his speech on leadership to Jon Snow mm-hmm. is to me one of the best speeches on leadership and being the boss actually mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, there is a lot there. So I was in a way sad to see him go, but and he, yeah. he's brave too yeah. Yeah. despite if you yeah. don't agree with him Janice Slynn on the hand yeah. runs and hides <laughs> yeah. in yeah. the you know yep. great example Dennis but who mm-hmm. got you the most I mean it has to be Hodor, mm. Hodor? I mean it, it, just for pure emotion value and, and I'll throw Summer in there too because I tough. love the direwolves I love the Starks and yeah. the direwolves get a bad rap on this show. They're just killing them left and right. And I, <laughs> I, I, I worry for ghosts. We, and, got, we and, got ghosts and, in Nymeria. And Nymeria's the, running off in the woods. Stay in the woods. Stay in the woods. Stay in the woods. Yeah. Stay in the woods. Yeah. Ghost. I yeah. tell you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hodor got, Hodor and Summer, those are good answers uh, for me. Mark, I'm a big Natalie Dormer fan. Oh, yeah. for, for a lot of reasons. Uh, uh, that, that was, Marjorie Tyrell was just such 
good character yes. who played this game, a, a kind of mischievous, diabolical Princess Diana in this world, this fantasy world, and I loved her, I loved her a lot. Loris Tyrell is underrated as well, not mm -hmm. a lot to do, but early on he, he has an Im impact on the show. Set his name go. I, I have an odd affinity for Balon Greyjoy. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I played Coach Balon Greyjoy in a web series called School of Thrones <laughs> once, so I studied Balon a lot. And I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's tough to see him go, but, and 1-1, one, one, that death of 1-1. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Going out like a hero, John. Yeah, man. You talked about That's it. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. We are uh, going to go out like heroes right now, we hope. This was episode one of Collider Thrones Talk, getting you ready for season seven. Season seven of Game of Thrones debuts on July 16th of this year, just a couple weeks away, and we're going to be there watching with you. Uh, uh, Sunday night is going to be our review show for the first episode. Now, stay with me here. Then we're going to go to Mondays, and then the finale. we got seven episodes this year. Uh, the finale we'll be watching on Sunday night and broadcasting that night. Uh, one of the reasons, uh, if you have a question about it, is because we want to make sure we take the time and, and put some good analysis into the show. Uh, sometimes if you watch and run to the cameras, you're going to miss some things, and then you guys let us know about it. So we want to make sure at times during this season there's going to be a lot going on. We're going to break it down as best we can. We did have a, a segment on the show today called Inside the Tower of Joy with Josh McCuga, but for time we're going to have to cut it. Uh, maybe we'll be back <laughs> next week. All right? So, uh, on that yes. note, I want to thank my panelists. Uh, Dennis, you are a mainstay, one of the backbones here at Collider, but you love taking the time to talk Game of Thrones. Yeah, Appreciate yeah. It. If it's anything Game of Thrones related, I have to make time to talk yeah. about it. You and me do the trailer reaction. I want Absolutely. to do this show. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm excited to talk with all of you guys about Game of Thrones and watching it with yeah. you guys as well. Yeah. Absolutely, John Roca. Absolutely, very happy to be back again this season. So I'm excited, and you know the new additions are great. So it's going to be a lot of fun to watch it with you guys and get some other perspectives, uh, some interesting book perspectives as well. Yeah. So it's going to be, even though we're off the books, yeah. there still might be shades of it uh, bleeding through. There so I'm be, excited to see what happens. There will be questions that we might have answers, and answers sure. that we need the questions again. Yeah. It's going to be like a Roddy Piper promo, <laughs> going to spin all around. Rachel, so happy to have you join us here. You've made such a, pla a splash in the movie trivia schmodown, but I've known you for a number of years as a Game of Thrones expert indeed. That is a word thrown around too much. You have earned it. So glad you're here today to join us. And I'm beyond. thrilled and honored to be here. This is going to be a ton of fun. I love meeting other people who are as passionate about the show and books as I am, and I could talk all day about it, so I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Absolutely. That is it for this week. I'm Ken Napsok. You can follow me on Twitter. I talk uh, Game of Thrones daily there, so uh, join the conversation, and we're going to have a lot of fun this year. We'll be back next week with a direct speculation heavy look forward towards season seven that is it for now we'll see you next time on colliders thrones talk hey guys if you like this video click the thumbs up button also make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel it'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at collider